I'm not, um, I'm not necessarily going to talk about anything that I've invented or, or, or a project that you guys can invest in unless you want to come work for me. I mean, I'm always open to new employees. Um, I'm going to get this started real quick, but I'll do a quick introduction uh, as to what I do. My name is Drew Lentz. I grew up in Mercedes. I'm a Valley native. Um, and my background in technology started when I was about 13 years old with the VAX cluster uh, here at UT Pan Am. My mom was an educator, and she gave me access to Tenet. I don't know if you guys remember Tenet in the early 90s. It was a Texas educational network. And back when Gopher was around and FTP was the best way to transfer files and you got all your stuff off of news groups, that's when I got started with the Internet. I got started with a group of guys from the UT Pan Am computer lab to build the first Internet service provider in the Valley. So when you talk about being able to Google something, back when you couldn't just Google things, that's where we started building these, you know, that's where I cut my teeth in the technology industry. It was a lot of fun. And so I started with that, and, and what I've managed to do with it over my career is give a little bit back to the community but have a good time doing it. So what I'm going to talk about today is some of the neat things that I'm seeing and the trends that I'm seeing specifically with regard to wireless technology. Because after I got into the dial-up stuff, bunch of years passed by and I started really getting focused on uh, RF, radio frequencies, wireless transmission, data communications and things like that. And what it's given us is these phenomenal uh, ways to learn about people and you know we talk about, you, you mentioned something very interesting when you were talking about how many people actually have broadband, right? This, and this just, it hit me. Two things from your presentation hit me. One is that, does anybody know what the, what the take rate is for broadband in uh, in Hidalgo County, it's 37%. So 37, only 37% of people have adopted broadband in Hidalgo County. It's the national low. Come again? National average is about 60, 65. We are the absolute lowest, <laughs> which is interesting, right? And yeah, so, and so what does the what does McAllen School District do? We give everybody iPads. Yeah, which is great when you're at school, not so much when you take home. What's, what's neat about that is I opened my mouth and I said that too many times and the superintendent contacted me and my job now, what I've been, uh, what I've been commissioned with with McAllen School District is, is to figure out how to provide free Wi-Fi access to everyone in the city of McAllen. And we started with a project a number of years ago to build out a couple of different Wi-Fi corridors for the city, for municipal use, for the police departments, for surveillance and traffic cameras. And now we want to take that and expand on it. And while that's neat, that's not what I'm here to talk about. I want to talk to you guys about something that's a little bit cooler. Oh, the second thing is my office is on the corner of 10th and Trenton. On the corner of 10th and Trenton, there's a Starbucks. Your office is by Moonbeams. My office is by Starbucks. <laughs> Coffee is the key to all of this. Yeah, the happiest day is when we got the new Keurig Pro maker in my office because now we can do anything. Um, I'm going to jump back and forth between a couple of things. And, and I'm basically going to give you a sales pitch that I'm giving my customers right now. And through that, I hope to entice you a little bit to learn what we're doing, because it's really neat stuff. We've built out a large number of wireless networks. I've done things like, um, like the Zuni Nation in, in New Mexico, and I've done things like the city of McAllen, and I've done things like Rio Grande City uh, in the next couple of weeks. You're going to see some cool press releases, because we're doing free Wi-Fi in the downtown corridor. Um, we had the honor of building out a wireless local area network at IMAS to do the first all-digital exhibit at a museum in South Texas. And we're doing all these neat things. But retail analytics is what's really coming down the pipe. And have you guys even, are you, do you, are you familiar with retail analytics? Not you, Renee. But, <laughs> but are you guys familiar with retail analytics at all and what the power of this is? OK. I'm going to get Big Brother on you real quick. And I'm going to do it um, with my wife's restaurant and, and her partners. Please don't deter this from visiting her restaurant and enjoying their fine beverages. Um, but what I'm going to show you is, is what retail analytics are. And to give you an idea of where I'm going with this on the sales pitch, I'm going to try and talk quick. And I do talk a lot, so I apologize if I go over already. Um, what we're doing is when you go right now, when you show up and you go to, you're going you're gonna to see where this is real quick as soon as I type this in. Um, I think this is it. Oops. Oops is right. When you show up at Roosevelt's at 7, you get a splash page. Have you guys been to Roosevelt's at 7? Please, go. Enjoy their, enjoy their, their beverages and whatnot. 
When you go to Roosevelt's at 10, you get this little splash page, and it's cool. And you want free Wi-Fi because you and your friends are going to upload pictures of Instagram, take pictures of your food, and do all these wonderful things with it. And that's really neat. Before, when you went to sign into their Wi-Fi, you had to type in 123456789.0, and that was your key to get online. And we saw an opportunity there to learn about our customers, but also at the same time, being able to, to make it easier for you to onboard onto the internet. So you click on Facebook because you want to log in with Facebook and you say, I accept the terms of use and all that good stuff. And then you hit next. And then you have access to the internet. And that's great. And you can do everything you want. What we're doing on the back end with this information is tremendous. I encourage you after this presentation to click on the terms of use <laughs> and read everything that that says anytime you sign on for things. Because there's some pretty important things in there that I'm not going to show you. And so, <laughs> so what we're doing with it, and if you give me just a second, let me try and jump on, uh, jump on my computer here um, so that I can, instead of trying to fidget with this, I can just uh, show you what I've got open. I apologize for being a little ill-prepared, but I promise you this is going to be pretty neat. Okay, so what I've done now, um, can you see it okay? Good enough? Okay, so what, what you've done is now that you have access to the internet, that gives us the ability to track a couple of things. And I'm going to break this out into two components. And again, I'm going to try and be very quick about it. So the first component is now that you've authorized Facebook and you've gone on and you're surfing the internet, here's what we can gather about you. And here's what we can do with you. What we can do is I can say Olmo, for example, he may have been to, Fa he may have been to Roosevelt's. But he might have 100 friends that have never been to Roosevelt's. And I want to be able to capture that market of people to come into Roosevelt's. And this is not about likes. This isn't about social media, you know, how many likes someone can give something or some type of marketing ploy to get people to like a restaurant. This is about feet coming through the door. So Omo has his 100 friends that haven't been to Roosevelt's. What I can do is I can craft a marketing campaign after Omo has proven that he's been to the restaurant based on the trends and his login and his checking of the box and forwarding on. And I can write a script. And on that script... My wife is calling right in the middle of this. That's awesome. So, um, so right, er, get over here. So what I can do is I can write a script. Wrong one. Yeah. So I just lost my internet's. Fantastic. Yeah. Thanks, honey. All right. Well, we'll we'll just go with it from here. I can write a script that says, "Show me all the people." There we go. I can write a script. You guys familiar with OpenGraph, OpenGraph API, the way that this works? I can write a script that says, query everyone that's been to Roosevelt's who has friends that have not been to Roosevelt's and tell me what their top three favorite foods are. So it's going to go out and it's going to look at all of your friends who've never been there and it's going to tell me what your favorite food is. I can take that favorite food and I can turn around and I can look at this and, and the statistics. I can see when people are checking in and when they're not checking in. And let's say the top three favorite foods, one of them is barbecue. I'm going to craft a special to advertise barbecue so that people can come into the restaurant and eat barbecue sandwiches so I can drive traffic in based on the analysis that I'm doing because you clicked a button to like, you know, because you clicked a button to access the internet. And we can use this to determine a lot of different things. We can use this to determine who's coming to the restaurant, who, uh, what their age group are, what their age range is. I don't even know what I just clicked on. What their age range is, when they're going to be there, what the statistics, what the demographics are. We can start to derive all this information because you clicked a button. And as a restaurateur, it brings a lot of sense to us because now we can, we can build our restaurant to help you better. One of the things that I'm looking at right now is using the Spotify API and the Facebook API and tie these two things together with this access so that when you walk in to a restaurant, for example, it's going to... Uh, check you in or you're going to log in and it's going to go, it's going to scrape your Facebook feed and it's going to find the top 10 songs that you listened to in the last week. And it's going to take those and it's going to figure out based on whoever else is in the restaurant what the top 10 songs based on the group are of the moment and it's going to drop it into a playlist. So when you walk into Roosevelt's and you hear a song that you like, you're welcome. It'll be kind of cool. Now let's take this a step further and, and I got my five minute mark so I'm going to show off the other portion of this, and this is not just on the Facebook side, and these two coincide. So on this side, what we're looking at is we can actually look at the overall analytics of who's coming in the restaurant. And this isn't just based on who's logging into Facebook or who's even using the Wi-Fi. What we're doing is we're doing data collection and gathering based on devices that have Wi-Fi enabled. I want you to just, just go with me on this one. If you have a mobile device, pull it out real quick. And tell me if your Wi-Fi is turned on. If your Wi-Fi is not turned on, raise your hand. Okay, 
Now, of those that don't have it turned on, how many have Bluetooth turned on? Okay, so you have Bluetooth turned on, but not your Wi-Fi. So we can record both. And so what we can do is we can tell who's coming into the restaurant just based on the fact that you're carrying a mobile device. How many people in here are carrying a mobile device? Yeah, it's 100%. Don't even, don't even worry about it. <laughs> There's 100% people there are carrying these devices. So our statistics can be pretty close in the ability to calculate how many people are there. And so you don't even have to be using it. It's just beaconing from your pocket. And if you're not familiar with the way that wireless technology works, every 200 milliseconds, a beacon is sent out from this. And a beacon is essentially my phone going, hey, I'm Drew's phone. Can I talk to anyone? And there's an access point that says, hey, I'm an access point. Drew's phone, what's up? You say, I don't want to talk to you. And it goes, OK, cool. And that's it. And it does that every 200 milliseconds, unless that's an access point that you're communicating with. Well, some geniuses figured out that every time you do that and it says, hey, I'm Drew's phone, it says, Drew's phone? OK, Drew, I got you. And it's logging that information. We're not the only ones doing this. Target, Walmart, Home Depot, all the big box stores are doing this already, whether you knew it or not. We're just the first ones that are doing it locally and having a good time with it. And so what I want to show you here is this is daily Wi-Fi user analytics, real world data. And what's interesting with this is this shows you the trends. Fridays and Saturdays, obviously, there's more people at Roosevelt's. You can see when they show up. And you can see what time they show up. The majority of the users sh are showing up at, at different times throughout the day. Let me try and get through this again super quickly. You can also track repeat visitors. How many people are showing back up at Roosevelt? So now I know how many people are coming to my restaurant that have already been there. <laughs> we've got down in this area right here, you can see that, OK, we've got less repeat visitors than we did a couple days before. And so you can go in also, and you can look at one-time visitors. And you can look at the trend analysis of people that have shown up once and have never returned. In this example, I think Friday is the day. It's the, the bar up here. On Friday, you get a lot of people that have been there, but they don't return. They're one-time visitors, and they never return. So we need to figure out how to capture that data. So let's start merging these things together. Barbecue sandwiches were the top three pick based on the Facebook Open Graph query, right? So what are we going to do? We're going to sell barbecue sandwiches on Tuesday to everyone who hasn't been there so we can bump those numbers up. And we can show the number of people that have been there based on that. And then we can tie that back into Open Graph to see that our marketing actually worked, that we said barbecue sandwiches on Facebook. And we only, we only pushed those ads to the people on Facebook that had never been there that love barbecue. And look what happened. People started showing up. Also, we can look at daily traffic trends. This is a pretty interesting graph uh, based on, on Roosevelt's. And it's really neat, uh, especially because of, of my age and whatnot. On the bottom, what you see is you see the number of people that show up throughout the day. And you see that the majority of them show up, as you would guess, between 11 PM and 8 AM. It's a late crowd. And you can see that there's a good lunch crowd, and there's a good another crowd. But 9%, what's that 9%? That 9% is 8 PM to 11 PM. Okay. 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. What happens between 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. for people? Let's go look at our users real quick. I know I'm almost going over my time. I know, I know. Let's go look at the time of people right here, ages 35 to 44. We're very low in the numbers of uh, people between ages 35 to 44. So let's focus on that demographic. Ages 35 to 44, 8 to 11 p.m. What are you doing? I'm over that day inside. You're eating dinner with your family. <laughs> That's what you're doing. You're not hanging out at a bar. So when you see, <laughs> but between 8 and 11, that's more or less the time when, when if you stop and think about traditional families and whatnot, that's what's going on. And so what happens when we say, well, how do we do this and what do we do with it? What we do is we set it so that we do a free kid special. And we say kids eat for free, Roosevelt's, 8 to 11 p.m. Come in, have a sandwich, do whatever it is. If that's a number that we want to boost. Let's, no, that's not specifically using Roosevelt's. This could be any restaurant. This could be Cracker Barrel. This could be Red Robin. This could be whatever it is. But you start to see the trends. Don't look at this for the data that I'm showing you. Look at it for the data of how you can use it and what you can do with this information. Um, as you move through this, you're going to see all this crazy information that you wouldn't normally have. And as you look at it, you can see how long people stay. You can see in, this, in this, uh, the light blue area there are 60 minutes or more. That's awesome for us, but or that's awesome for a coffee shop, but may, maybe not so awesome for us. We're trying to turn tables and get people inside and outside of a restaurant. That's important. Now, can I get just a couple more minutes? To, are you guys cool with that? I want to talk about one of the neat things that, that we're going to start doing with it so you guys can get an idea of how all this fits together. I love Renee, by the way. He's an old nerd just like me. and we, yeah, so, <laughs> so it's fun to, it's fun to have peers in the audience like that. 
So to give you an idea of how all this ties together and how all of this can be used to have some fun. And again, I'm just telling you this so that you guys can start to think about creative ways to use it and then come pitch me those ideas and then go sell them for me so I can get rich. That's, that's really where we're going with this. But one of the things we're doing is my wife, shameless plug, is opening up a lingerie store in South McAllen. It's called Allure, and it's going to be a nice, maybe a higher-end lingerie store. And one of the things whenever you deal with luxury goods is knowing who your clients are and knowing what your clients do. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these two pieces of data and we're going we're to smash them together. And when you're on Facebook, I'm assuming all of us have used Facebook at one time or another. I didn't even talk about salt. But on the, right hand, on the left hand side here, you have this little scrolling thing, right? It tells me what my friends are updating and what they're doing. So what we're going to do is when you go in and you're a first time customer, we're going to sign you up, we're going to do something. We're going to say, hey, here's an app. Sign up for our app and we'll give you 10% off your first deal. We register you, we get you all done. Put your credit card number in there. It's awesome. If you keep your credit card number stored here, you're part of our VIP club, you get 5% off, blah, blah, blah. Well, now what's going to happen is whenever someone pulls up in front of Allure, the lingerie store, without them even getting out of their car, hey, this is Drew's iPhone. Is there an access point I can talk to? My little scroller over there is going to pop up and it's going to say, Drew's here. Drew just showed up. And it's going to say, Drew is a 36B because I need to lose some weight. And it's going to show what my waist size is. It's going to show what my foot size is. It's going to show what my previous shopping habits are. It's going to tie into my Facebook likes. It's going to tie into my pins on Pinterest. It's going to tie into everything in my social life. And it's going to make it available there. So when I walk in the door, my wife is going to come up to me with a glass of champagne and say, Drew, welcome back. So glad you could come back. Last time you were here, you were looking at some stuff. I have a, a, an item that's similar to that. But I know, you know right now the trend is, you look at their Pinterest, you know, red bulletproof bras. I got a red bulletproof bra for you. You know, why don't you try this on? And I walk in, I'm like, dang. So I'm in the changing room. Don't picture me in drag. I'm drinking my champagne. I'm putting on my red bulletproof bra that I saw on Pinterest that I just so happened to get local. My favorite song is playing on the radio. And I walk out and I say, this is awesome. I love it. It fits perfect. They go, great. Put it on your account. Put it on my account. Sign with your finger. Walk off. Have a nice day. And those are the types of things that we're doing. And then the salesperson gets a little bit of a bonus because they listen to the analytics. They upsold based on everything that you're already doing, taking that data and building it in and figuring out how they can drive a customer service interaction. And me or you or you or whoever it is that goes to this store is going to round out and tell all their friends, man, customer service, phenomenal. Imagine if every time you walk into a restaurant, they swing the door open. They say, oh my, welcome back. Your favorite table's ready. Um, we're wiping it down. How do you know it's your favorite table? Because that's where you always sit, and we can tell that based on location services. Your favorite table's getting wiped down right now. We just had a customer leave. I, I poured you a salty dog because that's your favorite drink. Your wife, here's the Chardonnay. Come on in, have a seat. Your favorite song's playing on the radio. You're ready to go. Sign off with your fingertip on your account. These are the types of solutions that we're working with today. These are the type of solutions that I got six orders for yesterday. Yesterday. For some of the top restaurants in the city of McAllen. For some of the top retail places in the city of McAllen. These are people that I'm working with right now to do things like this. And this isn't a, hey, turn off your Wi-Fi so Big Brother can't track you. This is a, how is your life going to get better over the next 10 years based on things that you're already doing? Yeah, there's a little bit of a scary factor to it. But every time you, tick, you click on the terms and service, and every time you like something on Facebook, that's recorded somewhere. And now people are starting to use that information so that they can learn about you. Not so they can be creepy and stalk you, but so they can provide better customer service and give you a better product and more value for your money and a more personalized approach. And if, if, if you don't think that, that this is actually happening everywhere, I encourage you to look it up. And especially look up iBeacon. That's a new technology that Apple has built into all of your devices. It's already built in. It was built in starting with iPhone 4s. They just activated it two months ago. iBeacon allows you to do things like walk through the supermarket, and when the Oreos are on sale, your phone goes, -doo -doo. hey, Oreos on sale. Awesome. Cool. That's what iBeacon does. And we're working with those technologies right now for the real estate space. And we're doing all of these things in the valley. We're the first technology consulting firm in South Texas for South Texas by people that are truly nerds. I mean, we're coming up with some goofy stuff, and we're making it happen here locally. And if you guys ever want to be a part of it, you know, internships paid, unpaid, whatever, if you guys think that you have something that could 
that could make a difference in the valley, whether it's connecting school kids in Rio Grande City or connecting the entire city of McAllen, or collecting retail analytics on coffee shops and you know, restaurants, let me know, because we're always open to new ideas. But sorry, talk, uh, sorry it took so long. Totally uh, appreciate your time. If you have questions, ask, please. Thank you. Questions? Do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can do it with any existing wireless infrastructure if you use the right tools, or you can go in with a new type of wireless infrastructure and outfit it specifically for this. And I'm glad that you asked that. What we did is, uh, I don't have it open here, but at International Museum of Arts and Science here in McAllen, we went in and we set up a system for them. And the system's really cool. They have got the most state-of-the-art uh, wireless network anywhere in South Texas right now. It's awesome. And we're working with this group called Purple Wi-Fi out of the UK um, to test out some of their software. Unfortunately, they can't keep up with what I was doing with them. And we only got 11 check-ins uh, over the course of a week before their system you know, took a nosedive. But this system, for example, this is going to tell you, this is, this is using existing equipment where basically you just proxy it out, use a hotspot uh, service where you say, do all my login authentication on this remote device, and then that's how they pull it, using that social login. Yes? It's a good question. McAllen, politics, right? <laughs> so we're, we're in a situation where is it, uh, are the capabilities there technologically? Absolutely. We can, breathe, we can do this tomorrow. If we got the green light tomorrow to start building it out, it would be a course of action where we have to build out and we have to put different access points and nodes on different street corners and, and determine which street corners or city assets those are. The city of McAllen, I don't know if you know this or not, they're about, they've done a lot on their own, up and down Bicentennial, up and down Ware Road, all downtown. There's a lot of hotspot corridors that are already uh, uh, lit up by the city of McAllen that are free right now. All we're doing is we're trying to figure out between the school district and the city, how do we merge those two together so that when we give a kid an iPad, we know that as soon as they go home, they can have access to the internet. Because that 37%, the majority of kids, like uh, Delinda, right? Like, like she said, this is their access to the internet. Look up a guy named Anton Tronofsky. He's a, he's a journalist for the Wall Street Journal, and he wrote a report about six months ago. And his thing was, you know, you shouldn't have to buy a cheeseburger in order to do your homework. And that sparked this huge debate over digital divide and digital inclusion. And, you know, the kids are basically going to, to McDonald's to do their homework. What kind of learning environment is that? We're preaching obesity. We're preaching ADD. We're, I mean, come on. You're sitting in there being inundated with, you know, noise and lights and all this stuff. And a kid's trying to write a report, you know. And then Anton went on his second article. And I got, I, he interviewed me. He's a fantastic guy. His second article is about exactly what you're saying. So this is the number one way that kids in, the, in South Texas get online. Number one way that they get online. What kind of learning environment is a freaking iPhone, man? I mean, you're like, hold on, let me do my research. You know? This is, and, that's, and that's the reality of the world that we live in. And that's what we're trying to make a difference with. And all it takes, I, I urge you uh, within the city, when you see this come up, please, please advocate for or be, a, be an advocate for it because nothing could be more important than, than doing this. I'm a kid from Mercedes who grew up in a colonia who if it wasn't for the power of the internet, I wouldn't even have a job, you know? But if, if I can make a living out of it, imagine all the things that we could do in the Valley. Questions? Yes? How do you feel about the new NFC chips? So NFC chips. Um, I think it's great. Contactless payment is a fantastic thing. Although iBeacon is right on the cusp of replacing that. So I encourage you to, to look into that. NFC, if you're not familiar, is when you have a chip on your phone and you want to pay for something on a Coke machine, you just swipe your phone in front of the Coke machine and it spits out a Coke. Or you go to HEB and you swipe your phone and you pay for your bill. It's stuff that NTT Docomo was doing 15 years ago in Japan. And I always won that Coke machine. I could just be like, damn, I make quarters. Like, you know, get a Coke out of that thing. But NFC started to take this big deal. And unfortunately, when Apple didn't get behind it, I mean, it, as Apple goes, so goes the mobile industry, you know? And it's kind of weird. Android's supporting it, and there's some good devices there. But iBeacon, which Apple is supporting, iBeacon allows you to do contactless payment as well. iBeacon is low-power Bluetooth 
uh, operating in 2.4 gig spectrum that it runs, it's a little device that's about this big and it runs for two years on a battery and it allows you to make transactions with it. It just broadcasts an ID and then you go back and forth with that ID. So, yeah, but uh, contactless payment's phenomenal. I mean, in, in the case of my wife's store, what I hope we end up doing with that is it's not a contactless payment. We're storing the information, but then we're just getting an authorization via signature. I don't know if she's gonna let me do it, but it's a great concept. She's texting me smiley faces. Anyway, what else? Questions? Yes? So check this out. I'm glad. That's a great question. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine this morning, and I said, I've never been able to actually visualize explosive growth until I sent out $43,000 in proposals last night. <laughs> and it blew me away. Because what we're doing with this in the, in the retail space and in the rest, and granted, my, my wife's in the restaurant space, and her friends are in the restaurant space, and you know, one restaurant tour sees it, and they oh, I gotta have it, I gotta have it. And it takes off very, very, very quickly. But what happens uh, on top of that is when you go, stop and think about what we're doing in the retail space, right? I'm gonna be able to tell you essentially how many people are walking by the front of your store. I'm not gonna be able to tell you, not, I'm not gonna be able to just say this many people showed up at your place of business. I'm gonna say 300 people walked down the sidewalk, 42 of them came in. Let's create a advertising campaign to drive people into your store. And next week, I'm going to check the, the statistics. I'm going to be able to tell you that information. Or let's change out your window displays. From a marketing perspective, this is enormous. And this, isn't, this is where traditional social media marketing and, and this type of media marketing break off. Because traditional social media marketing, it's people running around saying, I'm going to charge you $400 a month to boost the number of likes that you have on a Facebook page. And there's no way to track it. Radio stations. Man, I got in the biggest deal uh, a while back with Entrevision. I I I have a community arts foundation. Second Saturday of each month, we produce free community events in front of the convention center. Please go out. It's called Sunset Sessions. The first time we did it, shameless plug, holla. The first time we did it, we used QR codes. We were some of the first concert producers in the Valley to implement QR codes in all of our uh, marketing material and advertisements. And the reason that we did it is so that we could track where people were interested in our events. And I went into Entrevision. Oh, probably shouldn't have said their name. Hope they're not watching. I went into a local media station. And I said, hey, guys. I want you all to sponsor this event and send people out and this and this. And they said, okay, we well, gotta buy ad space. And I said, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna advertise on the radio. I can't quantify it. I can't track ads on the radio. I said, well, we broadcast to 150,000 listeners. And I said, I don't care. You can't tell me how many people come to my event based on what I'm doing. What we're talking about here is completely different. You run an ad in a newspaper, any type of business that you're in, you run an ad in a newspaper, you can't track that ad unless they bring it in or it has a coupon or they say that they saw it in the ad. If I run that same type of ad on Facebook, I can see what people are doing and I can see how that ties into the number of people that immediately come into my store for that specific amount of time. And it's the only way to, to thoroughly track it. You know, I'm, I'm glad that, I, that we're doing this right now in South Texas because this is going to be huge. I mean, everybody's going to jump onto this thing. And, and being able to, to discern what the good stuff is versus the bad stuff and who's going to use their data and what they're going to do with that data and how they're going to implement it. There's a lot of big questions that are out there, and that's why I say I encourage you to click on the terms and conditions. See what they're doing with your data, you know, every time you hit that little box. I knew it was going to be you, man. <laughs> Good question also. The biggest problem that we're facing right now is merging the data together. So what we've seen is I've got the, the access points and the hardware and the capability to do it here. And then I've got the software over here that allows me to do a different part of it. But it's that middleware piece. For example, I use the, the, uh, the concept of my wife's store where, where it knows immediately who you are and you walk in. There's a middleware component to that where, and, and Josh is a software developer. Don't let him <laughs> fool you. <laughs> um, there's a middleware component to that that has to be tied together. I have to take the data and be able to understand it, analyze it, and actually use it. And then I have to take the usability and figure out how that works into the data side. And that middleware component's the toughest. That's where software development is, is enormous. I mean, software developers are the architects of the, of the next generation, the engineers. We're working on it. That's the part that we're working on right now. Um, you know, one of the things we've, we've talked about is in these hackathons. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to help out as much as I can with the hackathons because who knows, maybe the, 
maybe I want to throw a challenge out there to see who can write the connection to the API for Spotify, and I'll give you $500 and some concert tickets if you can do it. You know, instead of just hiring out and saying, you know, let me let me go hire a developer to sit in my office all day and you know develop stuff. Let's make this fun. Let's have a really good time with it and expand your mind and teach you guys how to do things that you might not have previously thought of. But we're in the middle, man. It's it's that's a lot of development. It's tough, but it's luckily everyone has a really nice API. So all you're doing is you're just connecting lines together, and whoever we can get who can connect those lines, that's where the where the prize is. No more. I'm a Thank you for your time. I totally spoke way more than I was supposed to. <laughs>